Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a new segment that we are calling Makers with Vicki. It is brought to you by my friends at Makers Mercantile. And for those of you that have asked that saw me promoting this earlier, this will not take place of my Ask Me Mondays. Those, those are still going to be exactly where they were before. But since I'd worked with Makers Mercantile for so many months um, and we really enjoyed it, we thought it would be really fun to do something completely different and separate just with them. So on a Friday or two a month, we're going to get together, give you a little inspiration for the weekend. And the focus is really going to be on mixed media um, as pertains to the textile world. So uh, what that means is that we'll be working with yarn and fabric and roving and then all the accoutrements that you can add, you know, like ribbons and silk, I'm sorry, ribbons and dye and um, buttons and that kind of thing um, to sort of play, really play with fiber and see what we can come up with. So we'll do a combination of things. Sometimes they'll send me supplies and I'll, des I'll be the designer. And sometimes I will be but the vessel for another design, as is the case today. So we are going to be talking about making our own artisanal yarn to create a unique piece like this scarf that's designed by Rhonda Fergnoli, who will also be watching this at the same time if you're watching live. And if you're watching later, she'll also be commenting along with me as well, answering your questions. She's absolutely the dye expert um, in the scenario. She also happens to be another sassy little redhead, so I trust her implicitly. Um, it's great to see you guys. Please make sure to tell us where you're watching from. We love that. Hi, Jade. Nice to see you. Um, and we're going to just dive in. So, we, um, what they, I don't know how familiar you are with Makers Mercantile, but they are a, both a physical space in Kent, Washington, but they have an amazing online website. All websites are online, online presence where they come up with, you know, they've got all your basic supplies that you need. And when I say basic, I don't mean boring. I just mean anything that you would need as far as knitting, crochet, sewing, embellishing, that kind of thing. But they're also really great about creating specialized kits and they don't go through any long process. They come up with them right there. They bag them. They put together beautiful um, imagery and great directions so that they can Anytime they're inspired, they can create something, put it in a kit, and then serve it up to you. Um, and so this that's the case with today's project. So this scarf, I'm going to take it down and show it to you, is just plain garter stitch, right? But if you can see the variances in the color of this, Kirsten from Norway, hello, so great to see you. Melanie from North Carolina, Robin from New York, nice to see you. If you can see the variances in the blue, that comes because it's hand dyed, which is what we're gonna be covering today. But you notice this little crazy action? This is what makes it artisanal, if you will. Uh, novelty yarns, are they go in and they go out, um, but they, they are absolutely in right now and they also can change just a basic, you know, simple, piece like this, a garter stitch scarf, into something really head turning. And even if you're not into, you know, wearables that have, you know, multiple elements into them, you can still use these same techniques to create like a pillow or it would be really fun to have a bag or something like that with it. So you can absolutely take the skills that we're showing you today and apply it to whatever, you know, floats your creative boat. But if you do, in fact, like this exact thing, you'll be able to buy the kit and it's really reasonably priced and everything's measured out for you. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover how to go. I'm assuming that most of you know how to do the garter stitch part. And if you don't, we have videos both on Makers Mercantile and my own YouTube pages that will show you how. So what we're going to cover is how you make your own novelty artisanal yarn um, based on the supplies that you get in this kit. Uh, they also added a button to this. You can do that just to add your own extra flair. Um, you do you, really. All right, so this color Saxon blue is really in right now. Um, it's very Shibori indigo um, inspired. You might remember earlier on an Ask Me Monday that I actually did Shibori dyeing in, um, in partnership also with Makers Mercantile. This is gonna be similar, but it's not as many steps. Um, it's much more kind of user friendly and is a great, this is a great project for first time dyers and also brand new knitters. So it's kind of a, like a double win. Um, it's also really fun. It's a great first time project if you've never really mixed media before because it's it's low risk. It's um, The whole kit is only $38 and you get, let me show you everything you get in it. All right, so. You get this hank of beautiful undyed merino, merino wool, and it's a chunky weight. 
Then you get a piece of silk. Silk takes dye beautifully. And then they have pre-packaged for you everything that you need and it's pre-measured so that all the guessing is over. So this is the aluminum sulfate that you'll need. And then there's a wee little bottle of botanical Saxon blue dye, organic dye, a button, should you decide to button it. And then for practicality, the gloves that you need for dyeing. And then most importantly, really beautiful step-by-step -step directions. But, in tandem with these directions, you're gonna get this action showing you how to do the dyeing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the usual flip around that's not always pretty, and I'm gonna show you step by step how we get the yarn to go from being two pieces yarn and fabric to one piece that you knit together to create a scarf or really anything that you want. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, and this is the part where I always ask you to tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're watching from, if you've ever tried hand dyeing yarn or fabric before. And then um, while you're talking, I'm gonna be turning the camera around because, and it's never a pretty process because as those of you who watch all of my Facebook Live videos know, these are shot on phones and there's no camera person, it's just this gal um, doing the work. So talk amongst yourself and we will get started. I'm gonna go ahead and flip around now. Okay, then you got a little glimpse of my studio. I'm gonna go ahead and perch this high so you can see a setup. Hi Peggy, nice to see you. Hi Cheryl. And also, I, in case I forget to mention later, anytime you buy anything from Makers Mercantile, if you use the code Vicky10, you get 10% off. So super awesome. And that goes not just for what I'm showing you today, it's anything that you buy. And I spell my name V-I-C-K-I-E. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is you're going to have a pot of hot tap water, um, just regular old tap water. And what you want to do is you want to just pour the aluminum sulfate straight in there. I actually already did that, so I'm just going to do that little action. You'd pour the whole thing in there, and then you want to drop your fabric and your yarn. So these pieces, you want to drop them in there. But really important, you don't want to drop your yarn in still in a, in a twisted hank form. You want to untwist it and you'll see that it's still tied so it won't come it won't come fully apart. So you don't want to undo the ties because that'll create some kind of weird crazy Muppet mess, but you do want it to be untwisted otherwise the dyeing won't be very even. Okay, so you want it to sit in the aluminum sulfate for at least an hour, and that is, I did this before I started this video, so that's already been done, so we're ready to move on. I'm going to grab some gloves and put them on, and what I need to do is I'm going to just squeeze out the excess water. And you don't have to be too, don't worry about getting it super dry or anything. Um, Flory from Ireland, well thank you, good to see you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take the pieces out and just kind of squeeze as much water as I can take them out. Now with the yarn, you wanna be careful. Um, this is merino wool, and so you don't wanna agitate it a lot. Our water isn't super hot that it would take a lot for it to felt, but just be conscious when you're working with wool that hot water plus agitation and then some sort of agent equals felting. And for this particular project, we don't necessarily want that to happen. So as you can see in the comment section, Rhonda, who is the designer for Makers Mercantile, she is on answering questions about colors. We're working with Saxon Blue today. She's talking to you about the different colors that you can get with different, um, with different dyes, and we will be doing more dyeing later on, maybe in the next month or so. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is we want to get our dye on. So to do that, we need another bowl of, well, really a pot, but because I'm up in my studio and not in the kitchen, I'm using a bowl. You want a, another bowl of hot tap water. So then what you wanna do is you wanna pour in the dye. 
and it's already measured out. You can use the whole, the whole bottle, or if you want it to be really light, you don't have to. Just play with it. This is sort of a playground project for you. And there's no doing it wrong. Okay, and then you want to take a paint stick, or I just have this old wooden spoon that I use, and just kind of gently stir it. And then once it looks like it's pretty, pretty mixed up, you want to gently place both your fabric and your yarn in the pot. From here, this is the only time you would need a kitchen or at least a hot pad. You would take your pot and you'd move it over to the stove and you'd turn it on and you'd let it heat until it simmers. You don't need to go to a full boil, but let it simmer and slowly kind of turning it, not with your hands, use a spoon so you don't burn yourself. Slowly, slowly mixing it just to, again, taking care not to agitate too much, but just to make sure that the dye kind of reaches all of the textiles. Okay, and then I see in the comment section that people are asking what the aluminum sulfate is for. That really just helps prep the fibers and it helps it open it up and accept the dyes a little bit easier. Okay, so let's pretend this is on the stove. It's come to a boil, I take it off. From here you have some choices and really it just depends on how dark you want your you want your blue to be. So the directions say leave it for 30 minutes, but Rhonda has assured me you can leave it up. Well, she she assured me that you can leave it up to overnight, and I can vouch for that because I did that last night. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the pot that I made last night. And some of you might have seen me on Instagram stories making this last night. So because I left this in all night, you can see how dark it is. If I just left it in for an hour or two, the color would have less depth to it. So if you prefer more of a, um, you know, a turquoise color versus an indigo, I would leave it only, you know, maybe a couple of hours. If you want darker overnight. And then much like hair, there's a certain point that the dye will stop taking. It can only... The pores can only open up so much and only accept so much color. And I think that's where we are now. Okay, so from here what you need to do is you need to take the yarn out and squeeze all the excess water out and rinse it. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, the process with the other one. And then I'm just gonna place it in another bowl of clean water. It's just tap water again. Look how beautiful that is. Really deep color. It's wet, so of course when it dries it'll be lighter, but because I left it in overnight, the depth of the color is lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna move our dye water out of the way and move our bath water in. And so from here what I would do is I would just kind of gently Massage it and you can tell this is also really interesting because these are different fibers This is silk and this is wool. You can see how they were in the exact same dye for the exact same time But they accept the dye completely different and this is this gives you another layer of visual texture in your project once we create it because um, Because of that very fact it'll it'll give a really sort of treat for the eye. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and, for the purposes of time, pretend that everything's, you wanna get this as rinsed out as you can. Okay. And I'm gonna move this out of the way and talk to you about how you get the rest of the water out. So you wanna take a towel, make sure it's kind of a grubby towel because dye will come off of it. And then very gently, lay it out and you're gonna wrap it in the towel and just squeeze.
And then you would just hang it on a hanger or on a hook or someplace where it won't get all tangled and you would let it dry. You can do the same with the fabric. And then you're going to also let that dry. And then you can steam the silk if you'd like to help the color to stay. You could add a little cup of white vinegar if you wanted, or you can just leave it as it is. Totally your call. But what you will get is you'll have a dyed hank of yarn. But as we know, as we knitters know, you cannot knit straight from, um, from a hank of yarn. It needs to be wound. So this is one that's been finished already. And Rhonda sent this to me and she left it in a less time, in the dye less time than I had. So you can really see how different the colors become based on that amount of time that you put into it. And then here is the piece of silk. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to combine these two to create what it is that you're seeing right here. All right, to do that, we've already wound our yarn. I'm going to set that aside and we're going to work on the fabric a little bit. I'm going to move this over here. So from here, all we want to do is cut it and cut it into strips. So it's your choice whether or not you want them to be long strips or short strips. But you're going to make a little cut. And I don't know that the width really matters, maybe half an inch to an inch. And then instead of, instead of cutting, which you can, this totally depends on the look you want. If you want a more rustic look, you need to cut a little more than that. That didn't work. You can rip it. There we go. And then you get this really nice raw edge. Thank you so much. I see some of you are sharing the video. That really helps us out. We really appreciate that. So please continue to do that, whether you're watching it live or later. Okay. So you're going to just continue doing that. Let me get a few so I can use them for demonstration. And you could absolutely, um, if you didn't want the more rustic look, you could just use like a rotary cutter or whatever, um, and you'd have some strips. But if you'll notice, not only does the edge become raw when you rip it this way, the pulling of the fibers also causes it to curl a little bit. Nancy, I'm so glad you're really enjoying this. Thank you for being here. All right, so we've got a few strips and you would do that until your whole piece is there. I just wanna take a moment to show you how beautiful this fabric is though. Um, even if you wanted to just play with silk and make a scarf or whatever, of which there are also kits, I believe, at Makers Mercantile, um, look how beautiful that is. Because the fiber was bunched, the silk was bunched and there was sort of, you know, no attention paid to how even anything was, you get this beautiful one-of-a-kind one variance. And this one quarter yard piece of silk does come with the kit. Okay, so now this is where we're gonna make the magic. This is the last step before you'd start knitting. So I'm going to grab a measuring tape really quickly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be tying on yarn every 12 inches or so. And you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but. So I see there's about 12 inches and then you just grab a piece and you tie it on and there's no special method. You just tie it on. You can knot it so it doesn't come undone. And then you're gonna go to the next you don't want to do them too close together because um, you'll find that that, f that part of your yarn or your knitting is going to be way denser and bulkier than the rest of it because we're not doing the entire hank. 
the quarter yard of silk will not cover the entire hank. And also it wouldn't, because this particular project is designed to only have a little patch of it, it might be a little feather bowy crazy to do the whole thing anyway. Um, you want to really spread them out. And then you're just going to keep knotting. I'm going to do a couple more just because I'm kind of having fun. Okay. Tie that. And then you would just continue. You would continue doing that until they're all tied on. And then you would just re-wrap wrap and you'd have sort of like a, a zany little cake of yarn there and then from then from there you would knit you would knit it you would knit it exactly how you would knit any other regular yarn and you just kind of let the fabric do what it's going to do all right I'm going to do that flip around again let's see what happens okay so that was it super easy and fun right and they make it they make it really doable you know I'm a big fan of the doable DIY right it's really the only thing that that um really the only kind of DIYing that I do. So really fun. And again, even if like a, a big artisanal piece like this isn't your gig, this technique in general is so fun and I think would be striking as a show pillow on a chair in a living room or even as a fun bag or even just to play with, even if it doesn't become anything, just making it is what really makes a weekend great. So if, if there aren't any questions, it looks like Rhonda has been asking or has been answering them beautifully, but uh, what I'll do after this is I will scroll through questions. And if you're watching this later um, in a newsletter on YouTube, on Facebook or whatever, we will continue to check in and answer your questions, um, answer your questions that you've posted in the comments section. Don't forget, you can go to makersmercantile.com. And if you use the code Vicky10, that's V-I-C-K-I-E 10, you get 10% off. Have a great, great weekend. Please take a little time to make something. Bye.